Install hub.com. Streamlining your installations. Another week, another podcast. We've made it to Friday, the 28th of April. Hey, howdy hi. Thank you for tuning in. Let's see what's been happening this week in this very busy industry. Let's start with some EV news. So only 10 car makers will survive the global EV battle. This is according to Xpeng. They said that this year they are faced with a very competitive landscape because of Tesla. There's obviously cutting pressure, which also creates hesitancy among consumers. Xpeng, which is backed by Alibaba and has invested heavily in autonomous driving, is targeting growth in Europe this year, but does not have immediate plans to sell cars in the US. In five to ten years, it's going to be a much more concentrated market, they've said, and they do believe that from that, the numbers of players will probably be reduced to less than ten at that global stage. But who are the ten? Who do you think the top 10 manufacturers will be? Who will last the line? In other news, Germany's Bosch Group has agreed to buy key assets of Californian chip manufacturers TSI Semiconductors and to invest $1.5 billion to expand the US production of silicon carbide chips for electric vehicles. Bosch and TSI did not disclose a purchase price, but they did say they have plans to invest the $1.5 billion to retool TSI's chip production facilities in Rossville, California, to start the production on these silicon carbide chips by 2026. Bosch plans to acquire the building, machines and the infrastructure of TSI, as well as its commercial semiconductor business. Bosch plans to acquire the building's machines and infrastructure of TSI, as well as its commercial semiconductor business. After retooling the factory, they have said they plan plan on producing silicon carbine chips on 200 millimeter wafer strips. The disc of silicon that chips are produced upon will continue through to 2026 in 10,000 feet of clean room space apparently. So they've got big ambitions and we're sure they'll do it. The long-awaited Shelby 2023 Mustang Match EGT has made its debut. Only 100 will be made and it's exclusive to Europe at the minute though. Now the upgrades are largely aesthetic really. There's a heavy infusion of carbon fiber with a new hood, grille, rocket panels, mirror caps and also a custom fiber front splitter that is functional at higher speeds. Uh, The only mechanical upgrade though comes with the suspension, the Shelby Match E sits a little bit lower apparently. Now the car looks virtually identical to the Shelby Match E concept that was debuted back in 2021 but if you want to have a look just uh, type it into Google and see what you think. North Yorkshire Council is to make EV charging points available to all. So if you live in Yorkshire, this is for you. Now, they've announced a new strategy to boost electric vehicle usage. Leaders said an enhanced network of charging points was key, despite challenges caused by the council's terrain. The council's executives will meet on the 2nd of May to consider the findings of a public consultation. It has already secured £2.2 million in funding for 70 charge points. They will be installed alongside battery storage units charged by solar panels. The technology will be sympathetic to the rural landscape and will see residential charge points in both on-street locations and larger charging hubs, the council have said. Councillor Greg White, who is executive member for climate change, said the rollout of comprehensive electric vehicle charging infrastructure is key to achieve the country's carbon zero target. This is what we like to hear. Demand for electric cars is booming, with sales expected to leap to 35% this year after a record-breaking 2022. The new edition of the IEA's annual Global Electric Vehicle Outlook shows that more than 10 million electric cars were sold worldwide in 2022 and that sales are expected to grow by another 35% this year to reach 14 million. This explosive growth means electric cars' share of the overall car market has risen from around 4% in 2020 to 14% in 2022 and it is set to increase further to 18% this year based on the latest IEA projections. The overwhelming majority of electric car sales to date are mainly concentrated in three markets. 
China, Europe and the United States. China is, of course, the front runner with 60% of the global electric car sales taking place there in 2022. Today, more than half of all electric cars on the road worldwide are in China, in fact. Now, Europe and the United States are the second and third largest markets. They both saw strong growth with sales increasing by 15% and 55% retrospectively in 2022. Now, it doesn't come as a surprise to say that in emerging and developing economies, the most dynamic area of electric mobility is two or three wheel vehicles, which do outnumber cars. So, for example, over half of India's three wheeler registrations in 2022 were electric, demonstrating their growing popularity. In many developing economies, two or three wheelers offer an affordable way to get access to mobility, meaning that electrification is definitely important to support sustainable development. And EVs aren't the only thing on the rise. The number of UK homes that are installing rooftop solar panels is at its highest in over seven years. A raise has installed more than 50,700 households in the first quarter of 2023 as people seek to reduce their energy bills. I mean, we have to, don't we? It's just not possible to continue as we are. Between January and March, there was more than double of the number in the same months last year and the highest figure since late 2015. The rooftop solar panels installed in the first quarter between them account for 265 megawatts of power, or half that of a typical coal-fired unit. Gareth Simkins, who is a spokesman for Solar Energy UK, said the number of installations has climbed steadily in recent years, as households have been increasingly aware of the benefits to household bills and, of course, the concerns around the environment. My brother's actually just had solar panels on uh, his roof, so I'm going to be keeping a very close eye. I've got to say it is something I'm looking into personally. Now, this is cool. Solar panels to the rescue. An Italian farmer is saving an ancient fruit with the use of solar power. Now, the citron of Calabria in southern Italy has almost died out from extreme weather and lack of economic value. But growing the crop under a canopy of solar panels has given the fruit a new lease of life with lessons for many climate stressed crops. Still today, the need for renewable energy to curb the effects of climate change and reach self-sufficiency is increasing in the EU and worldwide. Countries such as Japan, France, Germany, the US and Italy are looking at ways to keep their precious land and meet demands for sun-powered energy. I have never ever tried a Calibria, but I'm going to go out of my way to try one now. And if you beat me to it, let me know what it's like. Now, speaking of agricultural land, sadly, a huge solar farm the size of 86 football pitches on Harps Hall Road at Walton Highway was rejected due to the loss of land. Now, the 172-acre solar farm, roughly the size of 86 football pitches, would have been capable of generating enough renewable energy to power approximately 12,000 to 14,000 homes with battery storage for times when the sun was not shining. West Norfolk Council planning officials had recommended the scheme for approval. However, it was rejected after councillors raised concerns about the loss of farmland at the site. The scheme was rejected with 14 votes against, 2-4 and 1 abstention. But it's not all doom and gloom because work has started on the UK's largest solar plant. Now this is a project called Fortress in Kent and it's forecast to generate renewable power for 100,000 homes which makes what I've just mentioned sound like a drop in the ocean. Now, construction of the UK's largest solar and battery storage plant has begun after the, the company developing the site won the highest government subsidy yet for a sun-powered energy scheme. Project Fortress, which is being built on 890 acres of countryside at Cleve Hill near Faversham in Kent, was granted development consent in May 2020 and was the first solar farm to be approved as a nationally significant infrastructure project. Quinbrook Infrastructure Partners, who are the investment managers behind the farm, are being supported by the government's contracts 
for different schemes, with a 15-year deal in which it will be paid a fixed price for the electricity generated, with revenues adjusted for inflation and the cost paid by consumers through their energy bills. The price is equivalent to £56 a megawatt hour on 40% of the output. The scheme is said to be completed and connected to the national grid early next year. It is the largest under construction in the UK, although an even bigger project is planned by Photovolt Development Partners in Blenheim Palace in Oxfordshire that could provide enough electricity to power 330,000 homes. It sounds like we're moving on up. Speaking of England, the East of England's co-op has adopted green tech to cut road fleet emissions. The in-cab system from Lightfoot coach drivers to operate more safely and with greater fuel efficiency. East of England Co-op says it has cut fuel use, emissions and vehicle idling across its fleet of 104 vehicles thanks to the adoption of the British Green Tech for fleets. The in-cab driver coaching technology and rewards platform developed by driver tech firm Lightfoot has helped the retailer achieve average fuel savings of up to 13.8% and has also reduced vehicle idling, where drivers leave their engines running while stationary by up to 9%. Speaking of green tech, the United States, Sweden, Singapore, Switzerland and the Netherlands are the five most prepared countries to use, adopt or adapt to the frontier technologies, which will be essential to the green tech transition. This is according to data released by the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development. 166 countries were ranked on their level of preparedness to start using the frontier technology with the five following indicators. ICT, skills, industry, research and development, and of course finance. The following map used the summed rank of each indicator to give a final score. For example, where the US ranked in second place for R&D, 11th for ICT and 18th for skills, 16th for industry and second for finance. The sum was a total of 49. I tell you what, I wouldn't have wanted to have worked any of that out. Sounds like a very complex judging system, but it's great to hear that worldwide we are making a difference and green tech is definitely paving the way. So that's it from me. Another week, another podcast and another download. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. I'll be back with you next Friday, keeping you in the know. Don't forget to like and subscribe and tell your friends. And from everybody here at EV Comply, we hope you have a fantastic weekend. (laughs) 